Mike from Prep Pros here, and we're going to talk about three simple tips that can help you improve your score by 40 to 50 points in the next week before you get to the August SAT. So I've worked with hundreds of students, and these are some of the simplest strategies that make a huge difference in scores. So if this helps you out, please like and subscribe and share this with some of your friends. Now, when we get graphing questions on the SAT, you always want to take advantage of the fact that they are giving you X and Y values. In any sort of question where you're given X and Y values, we now have points that we can plug in. It gives us a really easy, consistent way of finding our right answer. So we're going to talk about how we can do that here. So here we're given this equation. Now, if we are really good with our exponential growth and decay, we can already tell which one's right. But we're going to imagine we are completely blanking on test day for how to solve this. Well, the first thing I'd always want to do is just pick an easy x value to plug in. The easiest x value for any graphing question is always see if you can plug 0 in because that's going to let you identify what y-intercept is correct. Well, 2 to the negative 0 is just the same as 2 to the 0 plus 1, and that's just going to equal 1 plus 1. This means we need a y-intercept of 2, so that's going to help us get rid of b. Now, the next thing is I want to go back and plug in another point so I can work my way to my right answer. So second one I would just plug in here, just due to my original equation being 2 to the negative x's, well, let's me, let me plug in negative 1 as my x value. And I can also see that each of these remaining answer choices are giving me different y values. So once I plug that in, I can find my answer. So 2 to the negative negative 1 plus 1 is just same as 2 to the first plus 1. What this tells me is when I plug negative 1 in, I need to get a y value of 3. Well, at this point, I can tell that a is my correct answer. The second tip I have for you is understand these solution questions on the SAT. You get at least one of these, sometimes two or three of these on every single SAT, and they're really easy what you, once you know what you're looking for. Now, there's really three things we have to be able to identify. One is infinite solutions. If we have infinite solutions, it's really just telling us that these lines are exactly the same. So we're going to have the same slope, and we're going to have the exact same intercept as well, because they're constantly going to be intersecting. Now, if we have no solutions, that's going to tell us that we're going to have something like this. We're going to have the same slope, but we're going to have different intercepts. That's because it's going to be impossible for these two lines to ever intersect each other. Now, the last thing you'll see is what we're looking for if we have one solution. If you have one solution, your only requirement is that your slopes must be different because therefore, at some point, these lines are going to intersect each other. These y-intercepts could be the same or they could be different. You're still going to get that one intersection. So now as we come back to this problem, the first thing we're just going to do is we're going to distribute this through and then we get to see which of these three scenarios we have. So we'll get 3x minus 8 equals x plus 2x minus 8. And well, that's simply going to give us 3x minus 8 equals 3x minus 8. And that means we're going to have infinite solutions because everything is the same. Now, you could have exactly two solutions if you're dealing with a polynomial here. The third thing that can quickly help improve your math score is just understanding the basics of statistics on the SAT. And the most common thing they ask about is standard deviation. Now, this is question 30 from this past April's test. So this is supposed to be one of the hardest problems on the test. But if we know one simple thing, we can get this right. Now, you're never going to be asked to actually calculate standard deviation on the SAT. You're just going to be able to ask to visually interpret it. All you really simply have to know is that as data is more closely clumped together, it's going to have a smaller standard deviation. Standard deviation really simply is just a measure of spread. And as it gets spread further apart, it's going to have a comparatively bigger standard deviation. So on the SAT, what you can always notice is if something has a bigger range, it is also going to have a greater standard deviation. Because if we look at the data set points for data set P, they're all more spread out. In comparison to here, we have our data more closely clumped together. So if I'm looking at this, we know range is our difference between our smallest and our largest. So we can see that data set P has a greater range. And therefore, we can also tell that it has a greater standard deviation. This does not always work for standard deviation outside of the context of the SAT. But on the SAT, you can always notice greater range is going to represent a greater standard deviation, and it makes these questions way, way simpler. If this video helped you out, please like and subscribe, share it with your friends. 
we're going to be dropping a bunch more math content before this August SAT.